What's up everybody? Welcome to Queer Girl Straight Skates. I'm Rebel. Today I'm going to tell you the things that I wish that I had known before I got injured as a roller skater. Bum, bum, bum. Straight Skates is a YouTube channel full of roller skating tutorials, reviews, general lifestyle roller skating videos, injured roller skater videos, all sorts of fun stuff that I think that you will love if you are a beginner roller skater or if you've been roller skating forever. So if you think you'll find a home here, you should subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can get notified when I post on every Tuesday and go live on every Sunday. So without further ado, let's talk about the things that I wish that I knew before I got injured. The first thing is something that I kind of knew, but I didn't really like hold central to my being and understanding as a roller skater. And that is that getting hurt when you are a roller skater and you're actively roller skating is not an if you're going to get hurt, but a when and to what extent. So what I'm saying here is not that every person is going to break their leg at some point in their roller skating career, but you will get hurt somehow. And I knew that, like I like knew it, but I wish that I had really centralized that to my understanding so that when I did get hurt, it didn't feel so jarring. And I could have just at least made myself more aware of what it would be like to be an injured skater. I don't know. I just wish that I wasn't coming into it so blind. And if I had really made that idea of like, you will eventually get hurt, like it's it'll be fine, you'll get through it, and like just kind of was more aware of everything, then I feel like I would be in a lot better spot than I was, especially in the beginning of my injury time. Honestly, I don't even know what I would do to try and prepare myself, but just knowing that would make me feel like, I definitely felt like a loser, like of course I got hurt doing something stupid, but like everyone gets hurt doing something stupid, so like don't even worry about it. Just, just relax if you get hurt, just breathe and think, okay, now we're gonna get through this. So the second thing that I wish I would have known is that the doctors probably aren't going to give you pain meds. And I wish that I knew that because I was like at least looking forward to going to the doctor to get pain meds. But like I straight up broke my leg and they were like, just go take some ibuprofen, you're gonna be fine. So I think I was expecting pain meds and I was like very taken aback when I wasn't given any. That's something that I wish I would have known ahead of time to mentally prepare myself. The third thing is that you don't know your body when it comes to actually getting injured as well as you think you do. And let me explain that. Um, I'm not saying that you don't know when you're hurting or when you're not hurting because you do. You know your body better than anyone. But I broke my leg I had a preconceived notion of what I thought it probably felt like to break a bone and I was incorrect. That is not how it felt like. The way I imagined what breaking a leg feels like was not the same. And so I just went and I hurt myself further by acting like it was a sprained ankle for two weeks and walking around on it and not going to the doctor because in my head I thought, oh no, if I was broken, like I would be hurting so bad and I would be feeling like this and that. And like, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know where I got off thinking that like I knew for sure what it felt like to experience that. And so, yeah, so it, in some ways, question your own way of thinking about what's going on in your body and talk to a professional because they're going to know like, I don't have an x-ray in my house. I don't have a way of checking that, but a professional does, and they did, and they told me it was broken. And then I was like, yikes, probably shouldn't have massaged my broken bone. Okay, another thing that I wish that I would have known, crutches, not fun. They're actually super hard. I think that like young me romanticized crutches. Like when I was in high school and stuff, I used to think like, oh, it's so cool, like people carry your books and like, 
crutches seem cool. I don't know why I thought that, but I did. And like now that I have to use crutches everywhere I go all the time, I hate them because they're horrible. And they give you these bruises on your palms. I mean, for me, they've given me these bruises. I've talked to other people who have also been hurt on their palms. And even like right now, my crutches, they have padding on them right here and right here. But like in the beginning, I didn't have that. And so this part was giving me a rash on the side of my arm. So then I started using uh, her, which is like a runner's chafe, anti-chafing kind of stick and putting it right there, which helped a lot, by the way. And then I got these pads, which do help my hands to not be bruising as bad, but they're still bruising. I guess I wish I would have known that because then like shove definitely said to me like, Hey, you should definitely get the fingerless gloves. I was like, there's no way I need that. Like I don't, why would I get those? And if I could go back in time, I would 100% get the fingerless gloves just to stop my wrist, my like palms from hurting so bad. So this one, number five is really important. I wish that I would have known when I first got injured that asking people for help is not you being a burden. Asking people for help is just getting help in your time of need. And other people are not going to feel like you are a burden to like help you by opening the door or like getting you a glass of water. Like the people around you understand that you are hurt. And there are moments, for me at least, I definitely put on the people in my household like, oh, they think I'm a burden. Oh, I'm such, I'm so annoying. Like, oh, I can't do anything. Like they must hate me right now. And what I realized when I actually talked to them about it is that they didn't feel that way at all. So what I had to start doing is throughout this process, I've had to put myself in other people's shoes. So I've had to kind of reframe the situation and go, okay, if, if, someone else, someone that I loved or cared about, if they were asking me to get them a glass of water or to help me grab a blanket or something like that, then I, of course I would say yes. Like I would have no problem. I would never think of them as a burden. So I can't let myself feel that way. And on another level, adding to that, other people have the power to say no. Like, just because you're asking for help, like if they're not capable of giving that help to you in that moment, they can say no. And they can establish those boundaries for themselves or decide what they're capable of or what they're willing to do. If you refuse to ask for help or just try and do things on your own and then you end up hurting yourself, like you are one, robbing them of the opportunity to help you and two, you are not even allowing them to make that decision to help you or to not help you. You're deciding that you're too much of a burden and that they're gonna be overwhelmed. And who are you to decide that? And I wish I would have known that because that would have made my first couple weeks a lot easier. Cause I'm hard headed and I think I can do everything by myself, but I can't. Okay, so the sixth thing that I wish I would have known is that everyone is going to give you a lot of advice. And that's because the skate community one, a lot of us have had this experience. Like a lot of us have been broken or something has happened to us. We've been injured because it's part of the culture. Um, and so a lot of us have lots of opinions, things that worked for us that we think, oh, this is really helpful. We're gonna give this advice to you. Even these videos, these vi videos are unsolicited advice to you, the injured skater. But I want you to take the advice with a grain of salt because even though something worked for me, it might not necessarily work for you. And a lot of us, like we have these experiences and we get advice from our doctors and maybe that advice was specific to us and maybe not, maybe it will work for you, but you're going to get a crap ton of advice. Think really which ones will help you in your mental space, in your physical body, what is going to be the best move for you. So don't just take everything that everyone is saying to you and go with it because not everyone is correct all the time. Um, but again, me, not a doctor. So even if I give you advice, 
Like you should take that with a grain of salt, maybe ask your doctor about it, maybe try things out for yourself, see what works, see what doesn't work. Very, very important because when we're injured, we are vulnerable and we think that we cannot do everything on our own and sometimes we even think like, I can't think correctly on my own, so I need other people to do it for me, but don't just listen to what everyone says and not think about it. Okay, next up, I, oh my God, if I had realized this, this would have made me feel so much better. You do not have to be positive or strong the entire time. Uh, there, I think, is this culture of toxic positivity that ends up being on the internet. And, and sometimes I think if you don't feel that way or you don't feel happy or positive, then you feel like you're doing something wrong. And that is not true. You're going through something incredibly hard, something difficult, something that sucks. Your life, the way you had it before, doesn't exist in that same way anymore. And so, yeah, that's gonna be hard and you're not gonna feel good about that all the time. And that's okay. Try and find little things that make you feel good, but that doesn't mean that you have to overall be like happy or stoked or pull yourself out of it right away. Like you should feel those feelings that you have inside of you. You should let those moments happen. That's okay. It's part of being human. It's part of grieving that the experience, it's part of the whole thing. So let yourself feel, don't be scared of not being positive or happy or good every time someone checks in on you. Like I've made it a real habit to just be like, hey, I'm doing medium or I'm okay or I'm fine, I'm not great. Like I am trying to be as real with where I'm at because when we are like, I'm great and we're not doing great, that doesn't do anyone any good. That doesn't make us feel good and that doesn't make the other person feel good. And if you do need help in that moment, you're not able to get it because you're just kind of like, I'm great, everything's fine. It's like, no, everything's not fine. Like you're broken or you're injured. Like it's hard, it's okay. Okay, so number eight is that you will definitely find out who your friends are, who your support system is, you will discover people that are willing to do so much for you and it will be such a positive experience with your relationships going through it. That doesn't mean that every moment will be positive because trust me, it is not easy being the partner of someone who is injured. I know this because I know how how many things I am asking Shub to do on a daily basis, and it is not easy. It is definitely not easy. I appreciate all that she's doing for me so, so much, and there are friends that have just come out of the woodwork to support me that I didn't even know they cared about me in that way. People will show their true colors, and I think that that's something that's really beautiful that comes out of it, but also, um, be gracious with people who can't support you in this moment because just because you're going through a hard time doesn't mean someone else isn't also going through a hard time. And so it's important to not expect everyone to just like drop everything to help you. But then I think that you will be pleasantly surprised at the people who really just full on support you so hard and you'll be grateful and then you can someday do that for someone else. Number nine is that even if you think that you are going to be able to push through this, you are gonna have to slow down and you are gonna have to make some concessions. This one, I hated. I wish I would have known this because then I would have, I don't know, maybe taken something off my plate in the very beginning instead of trying to just be broken but then also keep up the same level of productivity that I was keeping up prior to hurting myself, like that is way too high of a ask for someone who's just been injured because you're hurting physically, you're exhausted, you're having to sleep more than you usually do, you are hurting mentally, like all of these things are piling up and like that in addition to all the things you are already doing can end up in like a like a huge like explosion of, of wild and, and like sometimes overwhelmingness. And that's definitely what happened to me. So moral of the story, you're gonna have to slow down. You're gonna have to give in some concessions and that's gonna be okay. It is just temporary and you will make it through. 
which leads us to number 10, which is you will survive this. And I know that that sounds like an obvious, like a no dub, but when you're in the middle or in the beginning of being injured, sometimes it just feels like there is no end and there's no end in sight. And when people won't give you like times that you could skate again or times that you can walk again, it's just kind of overwhelming and frustrating. But I promise you, you will survive it. Just take it day by day because that is the only thing you can do. You can Sometimes you can only take it minute by minute or hour by hour or moment by moment even, and that's okay. And so even though it feels like it's never going to end, there is going to be a time when you will not feel the extreme feelings that you feel in this exact moment. You're gonna make it, you'll be okay. Whatever okay means, I don't know for you, but okay, exists at the end of this tunnel. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Queer Girl Straight Skates. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me some things in the comments that you wish that you would have known before you got injured. And if you want to support me, you can shop in my Etsy shop. You can get patches, stickers, shirts, all sorts of fun stuff, skate leashes, blah! So you could get that there or you can become a Patreon. I do vlogs every week and some extra stuff in there. And most importantly, cheers to the queers! I've got